Okay, are we ready? Mm-hmm. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 5, Episode 7. Make new friends, but keep Discord. I always want to start one time to trip you up to go, and this is Ember. You can try. <laughs> well, this was a fun episode. I thoroughly enjoyed this one. It's actually one of the most enjoyable episodes so far in this season. Not that the season has been bad. This season has been solid so far. I haven't seen any duds. And we're pretty much a quarter of the way through. Mm -hmm. Definitely enjoyed this episode. We have yet more signs that another year has gone by because not only do we have winter coming again, but we have the Grand Galloping Gala. Though I wonder at the timing because the gala seemed to be in warmer weather, but also it's in Canterlot as opposed to Ponyville, so I just defeated my own point. We had some stellar voice acting from Discord and Fluttershy in this episode. Yeah, I really like the voice acting from those two in this episode and more growth in Fluttershy's character. Yay! Mm -hmm. And so the only thing really with Discord's reaction you know, the whole understanding the multi-friend concept, that kind of goes against when he horned in on Twilight and Cadence's special day last season. He was trying to prove that they were still friends. So he kind of understands the concept of multi-friendship. I think that's why he got it so quickly at the end. Mm -hmm. And on to the smooth, which is the wrong color. <laughs> it was kind of out of nowhere. I actually paused at that point and went, silence. Silence. And then I started laughing like, oh my god, I thought I was going to be a big villain this season. I knew it was going to be in this season for some reason, but I wasn't expecting this. This works really well. It does. It just wasn't purple. <laughs> I don't think it needs to be purple, <laughs> especially since it's technically a different creature. <laughs> just throwing it out there. Well, the smooth was a living thing, but it was created by magic. A natural creature of Equestria. A very ancient creature because of what Discord says, apparently. Mm -hmm. But also a rare magical creature based on both Tree Hugger and Discord. Mm -hmm. When Fluttershy said that her new friend was like an expert or something in rare creatures, I thought the new friend was going to have a big reaction to Discord because he's like one of the rarest creatures out there. I know, but I think there's a lot of gray area in how you define a creature in the MLP universe. Because the ponies are animals, Discord is an amalgamation of animals. The deciding factor on whether you're a creature or a rational being seems to be whether or not you have the ability of articulate speech. Because the smooths did not speak. But Discord does. The Breezies, with the exception of Seabreeze, could only speak their own language, which is also what most of the critters that Fluttershy cares for, you know, speak their own animal language, even though they have ways to get their point across. Angel, cough, angel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and what's also a nice thing about this episode, because it's a Discord-focused episode, they can throw in a whole lot more references. Yeah. He is an amazing vehicle for that. We have everything from the Poltergeist to Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> I like the Metal Gear Solid. I, I also like that Pinkie Pie was just so calm, like, oh, hi, Discord. <laughs> and then, boink! <laughs> but then she was so excited. He wants all the cakes, and she's grabbing the camera. All the cakes! <laughs> I don't know what that's a reference to, but it was great. I was thinking it might have been a reference to the fact that the fandom seems to think that Celestia is really big into cakes, so, mm. Mm -hmm. And then we have several comedian references, Eddie Murphy, Rondi Dangerfield, Gallagher. Mm-hmm. Jerry Seinfeld. Mm-hmm. That, that felt like Seinfeld, but then he does the Ronnie Dangerfield right after it, so I was like, is, is he doing Ronnie Dangerfield that whole act? Because I've never actually seen all of a Rondi Dangerfield act, so I didn't have much of a comparison except for the classic. The classic is really most what he's known for, but Jerry Seinfeld really has the reputation for the observational humor, even though a lot of comedians use observational humor. I'm also glad that we got to see Maude in this episode. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. she's so awesome and scary. Yeah, I didn't realize that it was possible to use one's sister as a flotation device. <laughs> yes, that was awesome. 
and then Pinkie Pie parting with the schmooze at the end. Yes, that was very Pinkie Pie. But what I have to nitpick, because you know me, I have to nitpick something. Okay, so everyone's gala ticket had a plus one, but in episode three, season one, Ticketmaster, Twilight had two tickets, and so was only able to take one person with her. If each ticket had a plus one, she could have taken three out of the five of her new best friends. And that would have put an entirely different complexion on the episode because they would have had to do a lottery or a competition or something. Mm. Well, the tickets could have been changed over the years, too. Definitely. But just throwing it out there. Because parties usually do have a plus one. It's you plus your date. And hey, guess what? I have a nitpick. <laughs> oh my god. It's more of a minor nitpick it's like oh god why are we doing the screaming crusaders again that was the only thing that annoyed me in the episode we really need to stop doing cr screaming crusaders we're plus ones we're plus ones we're at the gala we're at the gala shut it like i know we're referencing season one here which i think a lot of season five is doing it's referencing season one a lot which is kind of nice because it's giving continuity but it's also going oh <laughs> But I didn't need that reference. <laughs> it would have been more fun to reference season one by having the Cutie Mark Crusaders have their own gala song or sing part of the gala song from season one. So, uh, more of your nitpicks? How did Rarity manage to get the jewels back for her gown? If the smooth is so big on jewels, why did her dress have the jewels on it later in the episode? What I'm trying to figure out is how she got her dress back, period, because Discord kind of vacuumed it off of her, which was kind of a cute scene because, like, Wait a minute. Rarity, you're naked all the time! I know. It's like, every time they have a reference like that, it's like, most of the time they're not wearing clothing. So, yeah, not so much making sense here. But Discord could have been nice, and when he pull it out of the vacuum and give it back to her, or, you know, this is Rarity. She had a backup dress, in which case that's where the extra jewels came from. Yeah, that's actually what I was thinking, considering um, her experience with the last gala. She's like, okay, I'm bringing backups this time. Either that or taking her experience in Manhattan where she managed to make an entire clothing line out of the contents of a hotel room, she just made a new dress. <laughs> I was actually going to say that if she did have extra dresses, she probably had extras for everyone there, you know, all of her friends. Mm -hmm. Like this time, I'm prepared. Though that doesn't explain how upset she was. Though we're talking about rarity here, so... Yeah, the ruination of a dress is still the ruination of a dress. And back to the smooths real quick, wasn't the original smooths defeated by music? No, the original smooths was defeated by the flutter ponies. Mmm, okay, I was just double checking that because a couple of my friends were like, wasn't the original smooths? Like, I don't know, I haven't watched the that particular part of MLP in like forever. Not that I probably couldn't find it on YouTube somewhere. Yeah, well, they initially managed to defeat it with the rainbow piece because the smooths was missing an ingredient. When they got the final ingredient, the Smooths not only managed to take over and wreck Dream Castle, it also took the rainbow. So we had no powers. And there was some legend about the Flutter Ponies being able to help. And so it was the Flutter Ponies who saved the day. And then we gave the Grundles the castle because why live in a castle when you could have a dream beach house by no beach? <laughs> ah, miles and miles of beach to see. We're in a desert, dude. Really? <laughs> I just thought it was a really big beach. Random joke there, ignore me. I usually do. <laughs> oh, I, I love that we got to see Discord's home. Oh yeah, that poor male pony. He's never gonna catch a break. No. And what the heck was that creature that grabbed him in the background? I'm not sure. I would have to go back and freeze frame and then probably Google. <laughs> yeah, I, I paused it and went through it frame by frame myself. And I'm like, God, I need to go online and watch the HD version of this. Because that creature just looks odd, so I'm guessing it's just some random creature in the Discord dimension area. Which brings up the question of, another nitpick of, how did the male pony get in there? I'm wondering if it's a separate dimension or if it's actually somewhere in Equestria. Of course, let's say it says, well, you have these 10 acres. You can do whatever you want with it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Also, considering that Discord can create rips in dimensions, he could have an entrance somewhere in Equestria for people to get to him. Because I'm sure that Tuesday Tea with Fluttershy isn't always at Fluttershy's. Also, who goes home when they're in a funk and does housework? That is never a cure for my temper. <laughs> Putting on the maid clothes, dirtying the clean dishes, that is not my idea of a pick-me-up. 
<laughs> I love how you even went in the context of the scene. <laughs> and speaking of Discord and his dimension and the male pony specifically, well, not the male pony specifically, but the reaction right after he finds out he has a ticket, I'm like, what, is he going to break Tyrick out? <laughs> like, no, it's got to be something else. <laughs> Because the way he was reacting was like, he's going to do something evil. Well, yeah, but he wouldn't go so far as to bring Tirok, even assuming he could get to Tirok, because mm, Tirok already betrayed him, so no. Mm -hmm. But it was like the first thing that popped in my head. I was like, yeah, that's not possible, but that's kind of a scary thought. <laughs> So, any more thoughts in this episode? I really like Treehugger. She kind of reminded me of the couple from the first MLP comic Omnibus when Rarity gets stuck out on the farm. Yeah, a lot of people was like, why didn't they just bring those on there? I'm like, no, do not make that canon. No, please. <laughs> yeah, I really don't want that to be canon. Th that was one of the better comics? Yeah, it was one of the better ones and more enjoyable and felt more in character. But it just reminded me of them because of the whole, you know, kind of typical 60s, dude, you're really harshing my mellow type of vibe. I like that we had an explanation for how Fluttershy knew this pony, that she met Treehugger when going to check out the Breezies. So that's more tying back to previous seasons and giving more continuity and a very easy way to retcon something because, oh, hey, I didn't talk about much of what happened when I went to see the Breezies, so anything could have happened. I think it's one of the reasons this season is feeling so good to me is because they're doing a very nice job of fitting things in. There there hasn't really been any kind of super jarring, where did that come from? Or why is this character so badly written? It's just so far, everything's been really solid and I'm enjoying it more because of that. Especially this episode, I just, I was giggling constantly. <laughs> I still want to know where Prince Blueblood and Luna were because... Prince Blue Blood was at the first gala. We have a good reason for Luna to not be at the first gala because she was still socially adjusting and she wasn't more adjusted until after the Nightmare Night episode. But you mm. would think she could find a few minutes to be at the gala. That's a good point. And speaking of royalty, Celestia at the end. That was awesome. <laughs> Why do you think I invited Discord? That was like another moment of her being Celestia. Like, she thinks things through. She's like, yeah, it, especially if Twilight's planning this thing, it's going to be slightly less stuck up, but it's still going to be a kind of a boring affair. Now, if I invite Discord. Yeah, but then you still have that worry of, oh, I wasn't able to stop this with my magic. I mean, nobody else was able to stop the smooths with their magic either. But, you know, it's still kind of dangerous. And, you know, you guys don't have the elements of harmony anymore. I mean, you have your super powered up selves, but still it's like, mm, I don't know about this. And that's mainly me going to the smooths because like Discord we can handle. Discord we've beaten a couple times. That reminds me of the whole, then we can go back to having tea things again and then, don't worry Fluttershy, we'll stop him. Instant disco ball, go fetch! <laughs> that was awesome because it's like, you didn't do anything to hurt them, but you just instantly got everyone out of the way. That alternate dimension looked very scary. <laughs> and apparently humid. Yeah, a puppet show dimension. Yeah, that would have been interesting. And I do like how Treehugger's like, um, you're gonna have to let me, like, settle down from what just happened to me before I can give you an actual hug. It made her a little bit more realistic, because... You know, she's mellow and everything, but getting threatened to be thrown into another dimension kind of unsettles you. <laughs> just a little bit. And I said that as if I had experience. <laughs> it just feels like you have experience. It's all an illusion. It's all those times Goku was sent to another dimension. <laughs> you know, in the U.S., where he wasn't allowed to officially be killed or go to hell. <laughs> uh, unless you go to Kai. Yay, for you it's making Dragon Ball shorter and more easily able to watch. <laughs> And with better voice acting. <laughs> mm-hmm. But now back to My Little Pony. Well, it's just when I was like, I'm just going to send her to another dimension. My brain went straight to Dragon Ball Z. You know, US <laughs> version. Because that's what you did to people. You sent them to another dimension. <laughs> and let's not even get started on Voltron. No, they're on the medical planet. Yeah, everyone went to the medical planet or everyone was just sleeping. Okay, final thoughts. Well, overall, I really like the episode. Like I said, I was giggling a lot throughout. I was like, oh my god, that reference! I know that reference! I know that reference! Oh my god, continuity! <laughs> I love this episode! 
And it was a really well done Discord episode. It wasn't like flaky, it didn't feel too fast. Everyone felt in character and we got a new character and we got to see the gala again and it just was really good. I really enjoyed it. It's my favorite so far except for the intro, mainly because the intro gave a setup. <laughs> Now, I really enjoyed this episode. I was really excited to see Discord's name in the title because I was like, yay, Discord episode. This will be interesting. And it can't possibly focus on the Cutie Mark Crusaders. <laughs> yeah, we had two Cutie Mark Crusader episodes in a row. That's enough for now. Let's get on to some other stuff. Like, I don't know. There's this table that points out magical friendship problems over Equestria. I heard we can go places, so... Maybe, please, I don't know, would you, I don't, take us somewhere else? <laughs> I don't know, like, the Griffins or someplace we haven't seen yet or even heard of? <laughs> yeah, let's go see the Griffins or the rest of the Zebra tribe or get involved with dragons again or go someplace else we've never heard of. I still want to see Scorpan's homeland, and I want to know if Scorpan's still alive, but at the same time it makes kind of makes sense not to invoke the Table Tree Castle map too often, because if there's too many major friendship problems, then Equestria is probably in a lot of trouble. So I'm thinking maybe that's going to be season finale, that there are too many problems on the map and they have to split up. Hmm, that would be nice, especially if they make the season finale like stretch out over five episodes or six. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, where we actually have this nice ramp up into the season finale instead of all normal episodes, then a two-part season finale. <laughs> <laughs> It'd almost be nice if I'm still right about the schmooze being a problem, like it comes back later, you know, because it would actually be nice to, for once, have clues about, you know, stuff that leads up to the finale in the episodes of the season. Mm-hmm. You know, like in season one, where we found out about the gala in episode three. Later, we were making dresses for the gala, and then we went to the gala. Mm -hmm. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, season five, episode seven. Make new friends, but keep discord. Thanks for listening. If you like Lex's art, you can find him on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Want to keep up to date with what we're doing with these podcasts? You can follow us on Tumblr. Really like this podcast? Leave a friendly comment below. Also, this is YouTube, so please subscribe. Really, really like Lux's art and would like some of your own? He's currently open for commissions. All links in the description. Why do you think I invented Discord? It would be so boring I without him. I hope she didn't invent Discord. I really hope not. Thank you for catching my audio flaw. No one would have known if you would have kept it. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you have a chance to re-record it. Uh...